Okay, so as you can see, I'm wearing my new my new coat that my wife gave me. She gets me one every year from Costco because she's been working at Costco now like going on 18 years. And I love these. These keep me warm in the winter. They got a hood. And believe me, winter's here. I'm also say it is because the weather is just cooling off uh, quite a bit now. So it's been rainy and I still come out and do my, uh, do my delivery job when I can. So that's a good thing when I get the ships. But it's funny, I got this bot that gets me ships, that grabs me ships. And this bot, which I, I hate it all, this new technology crap. I mean, if I just sat and waited for shifts, it, that, that don't work. Um, I used to swipe and swipe and swipe to see available shifts. There's nothing like that anymore. It's so overwhelmed because there's so many drivers. You know, I'm still doing this because I need it for a living and I don't have another job yet. But, um, yeah, this bot uh, just went down a couple times and then it just didn't give me shifts and sometimes it comes back and gives me a couple shifts here and there and I'm thinking okay well good but I pay $60 a month for this bot this stupid bot and it's stupid I call this technology dumb uh, because it's not not good I mean they you know they expect drivers to get to do the work or to get the shifts but then you got so overwhelmed with uh, so many drivers and so many delivery guys that it's ridiculous but anyway that's just me chewing about uh this position that i got i wanted to change i pray that it changes and god graces me with something steady i know my wife would love to see me on with something steady and hopefully it comes out of this college that i took for two years but uh we just have to wait and see and i have to finish it up but anyway I'm gonna continue on here. Um, beautiful, beautiful, before the eons. This is the title of this video because we were chosen in Christ before the eons began. And this next section is just so beautiful. Before times eonian. Yes, God knew us then and was even then acting for us. He was giving us in Christ Jesus the grace which was to be the hallmark of our evangel through the eons to come, a display of God's grace to his universe that we are, and we are first to receive this. God's purpose is described as the purpose of the eons. Ephesians 3.11. This is to say it is a purpose that is tied to the eons and is contained within them. It does not extend beyond them, either before or after. Though it was conceived before the eons and its results will be enjoyed after the eons are consummated. Its actual outworking takes place during the eons themselves as God's display of grace through the body of Christ, through the members of the body of Christ. This is what we were made and chosen for. So that when we speak of something as before eonian times or before times eonian, before the eons began, we are talking of that which was in existence before God began to put his purpose into operation. We were already there. <clears throat> and right back there where we were foreknown of God. And in a figurative sense, were in existence in Christ. When the grace was given to us in him. And from that moment, God was for us. How could we be, how could we be in Christ long before we were born? And even before humanity itself was in existence. In exactly the same way as woman was in humanity from the moment that Adam was created. So think about this. Woman was laying dormant. Actually, the two sexes, male and female, were in the one. <clears throat> Adam. Come out of the soil. God created a human being. That was Adam out of the soil of the ground. And that's what Adam is. Soil. We read in Genesis 1.27 in the Concordant Version that creating is the Elohim humanity in his image in the image of the Elohim, he creates it male and female he creates them yet the woman does not appear as a separate being until the end of Genesis 2 
it is in Genesis 1.28 that the two, male and female, are blessed. And this is referred to in Genesis 5, 1 and 2, where we read, This is the scroll of the genealogical annals of Adam. In the day that the Elohim created Adam, in the likeness of the Elohim he made him. Male and female created he them, and bless them is he, and blessing them is he, and calling their name Adam. In the day they are created, it is quite clear from the scriptures that God had the place of the woman in mind from the moment that Adam was created, and he made provision for his in his purpose for her to appear as a separate individual later. In just the same way God had the Ecclesia in mind, the body of Christ, from the moment that Christ came into being as God's creative original. Revelation 3.14, the firstborn of every creature, Colossians 1.15, and before God put any part of his purpose into operation, he had made provision within it for the Ecclesia at, that, at some stage to have an existence of its own as the complement of Christ. Just as woman has an existence of her own as the complement of the man. And just as Adam, through his complement, begins to fulfill the intention of God, that humanity should increase and fill the earth. So Christ, through the, his complement, the ecclesia, which is his body, to even now, be, now, beginning the great work of reconciling the universe to God. Ephesians 1.23, Ephesians 3.10. And 11 and Colossians 1 20 so right now we are display to the celestials we're already on display God puts us here as a display of his grace now in human form to have the experience of a human being so we are display of his overwhelming grace to celestial beings as we speak it will be in the oncoming eons in reconciling his universe, that we are going to be that tremendous, powerful display uh, of what God did with us first in Christ. Okay, pre-designated, not predestinated. These considerations bring us to the next point. Not only were we foreknown by God, but he put his purpose into operation. But our place in that purpose was predetermined. And our appointment to that position was made. In Romans 8, 29, we read, Whom he foreknew, he designates beforehand to be conformed to the image of his Son, for him to be the firstborn among many brethren. In Ephesians 1, 5 and 6, In love designating us beforehand for the place of a Son for him through Christ Jesus, in accord with the delight of his will, for the lot of the glory of his grace, which graces us in the beloved. And again, in Ephesians 1, 11 and 12, In him in whom our lot was cast also, being designated beforehand according to the purpose of the one, who was operating all in accord with the counsel of his will, that we should be for the lot of his glory, who are pre-expectant in the Christ. Christ Jesus is the Son of God and the Son of his love, and the only stature befitting that which is the complement of Christ is that of a, of a son. That is why sonship is stressed in this chapter 8 of Rome of the Roman epistles. Verse 14 reads, For whoever are being led by God's Spirit, these are sons of God. For you did not get slavery spirit to sphere again, but you got the spirit of sonship in which we are crying, Abba, Father. Oh, what a privilege it is to be able to call God by, his, by this name. And the name which Jesus himself used in that intimate conversation with his father on, this, on the solemn occasion in the Garden of Gethsemane. God is truly for us. In this passage, Romans 8.29, we must insist on the use of the term predesignate or designate beforehand rather than predestinate as the King James Version renders the Greek pro or orizo before seas. Okay, that's the English elements before seas. Because of the King James Version rendering, many believers think that of this word as referring to some future existence in which we are to be find, to find ourselves, often a somewhat vague location in the universe, which is a general conception of heaven. <clears throat> in this what it, in is this what the Greek word is indicating, or is it not rather directing our minds toward the wisdom of God? 
And then in another scriptural mention of pre-designation, 1 Corinthians 2, 6 through 8, we find that the term is clearly connected with the wisdom of God. For there we read a wisdom not of this eon, neither of the chief men of this eon, who are being discarded. But we are speaking God's wisdom in a secret, which has been concealed, which God designates before the eons for our glory. Pre-designation, what which not one of the chief men of this eon knows. For if they know, they would not crucify the Lord of glory. Like the secret mentions in this passage, our pre-designation also dates before the eons. God's purpose from beginning to end was conceived before any part of it was put into operation and the place of the ecclesia in God's purpose was thus foreordained. We were designated beforehand for the place of sonship. We were designated beforehand for, to, for a definite role in God's purpose rather than destined beforehand for an undefined future in some mystic place called heaven. There is no suggestion in scripture that we go to heaven for the rest after, for a rest after our labors on earth. On the contrary, our work will undoubtedly increase after we have been caught up to meet our Lord in the air. Our prime ministry is among the celestials. I love that. Ephesians 2, 6 and 7 and Ephesians 10 and 11. So clearly our destination, which has been pre-designated, is among the celestials. Here is just a temporary stopover in the sense of being a display of God's grace. We are nothing here. We're kept low for a purpose. We're separated for a purpose. But God is going to bring us together in the air to meet our Lord as a whole complete spiritual organism. Spiritual organism. It's not a human soulish physical thing. It is a spiritual organism, meaning we are members of the body of Christ with our head as Christ together as one. And this is what God is going to display in his universe in the oncoming eons, bringing us together. It is for this that we even we are even now blessed with every spiritual blessing among the celestials in Christ. Ephesians 1 3. It is through the medium of many generations of woman as man's complement that humanity has spread all over the face of the earth, thus fulfilling God's intention as expressed in Genesis 1.28. Likewise, it is through many members of the Ecclesia as Christ's complement and acting in the power of Christ that all creation will be reconciled to God. It is in Christ that the power resides. He is the head over all, directing all. Yet it is in the Ecclesia and in Christ Jesus that God is to receive glory throughout all the generations of the eon of the eons. Amen.